In this lesson, we're going to talk about limits. This is a very interesting concept, and uh, to help you understand what uh, these limits represent and how people got to this concept of limits, let me tell you a short story about um, how Archimedes was trying to find a proof for the area of a circle in which he actually used this concept of limits. So you have the circle for which you want to determine the, the area. You don't know it. And you know it's a very simple way to uh, calculate the area of a, a polygon. Start with something simple, like a square. If we inscribe this square inside the circle, you see it's covering uh, a great part of the circle, but obviously not entirely. Now, if we take a polygon that has double the number of sides of the uh, square, so an octagon, as you can see in the image on the right, the polygon is covering more of the area of the circle, leaving a lot less uh, of the circle uncovered. Now, if you continue this process using uh, more and more sides, it doesn't matter if you double them or not, uh, the area of the polygon is going to get closer and closer to the area of the circle it's going to approach the area of the circle but never going to exceed it so the area of the circle is the maximum is the limit we call that is the limit for this area of the polygon now let's take this concept from the other uh, perspective let's take the the square and put it on the outside of the circle so inscribe the circle inside the polygon again obviously this time the area of the polygon is greater than the area of the circle so uh, we're gonna have to use again an octagon on the outside of the circle so you see how the polygon the area of the polygon is getting uh, closer and closer to the area of the circle the more uh, number of sides you put on these polygons however then the area of the polygon is always greater than the area of the circle It's never going to be less than the area of the circle so in other words again the area of the circle it's the limit uh, for the area of these uh, uh, polygons so hopefully now you have a good idea about what the limit represents let's look at the algebraic notation of a limit we're gonna write and we read this as follows limit of f of x when x approaches a equals L just a numeric value uh, it so happens that sometimes you are not gonna have a limit so when it when the limit does not exist that's what we say the limit does not exist or in short DNE when we work with limits there are also two other uh, notations that we're gonna use limit of f of x when x approaches a from the left is this negative sign as a power of a but this is just a notation this doesn't mean a power negative this means x approaches a from the left and uh, the alternative is limit of f of x when x approaches a from the right x gets uh, greater values than a it's very close to a but it's approaching that value a from the right There are three conditions that have to be met in order for a function to exist. So let's actually look at these three conditions. The limit of f of x when x approaches a from the left exists. That's how we write x approaches a from the left is this a at power uh, negative sign. The second condition is that limit of f of x when x approaches a from the right exists so a at power plus here that's how we read this x approaches a from the right and the last condition is that limit of f of x when x approaches a from the left has to be equal to limit of f of x when x approaches a from the right so these two limits from the left when x approaches a from the left and from the right they have to exist both but they also have to be equal 
and of course if the limit of f of x when x approaches a from the left is different than limit of f of x when x approaches a from the right then the limit of f of x when x approaches a does not exist you may wonder why do we study these uh, limits um, when we talked about uh, instantaneous rate of change and functions and how is that going to help us in order to uh, work with functions. When we analyze functions it's very important to know if uh, a function is continuous and if it's, there is uh, discontinuity there we need to know how to treat that discontinuity so uh, this concept of limits is going to be very handy in determining if uh, functions are continuous or discontinuous. A function f of x is continuous at a value of x equals a if the following three criteria are being met. f of a is defined. a belongs to the domain of the function f of x. The second condition is that the limit of f of x when x approaches a exists. And then the last condition that has to be met is that the limit of f of x when x approaches a equals f of a. If all these three conditions are being met, then our function, function f of x is continuous at that value a. When x equals a, the function f of x is continuous.